way salvation. Yes. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. You are not permitted to be sad in his presence. Yes. It's a crime. To be friending your face in his presence. And with joy, the Bible says, we will draw water from the wells of salvation. The only qualification you need to fetch water from the wells of salvation is joy. So regardless of what is happening in your life, you will tell the devil and tell that situation you can't touch my joy. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord God is my strength. Now you can change things with joy. And I have come to know that there is one thing the enemy cannot stand. is your smile. There is one thing the opposition cannot handle. is your joy and your peace. They are troubled when you are calm, when you are peaceful. Now in this month of satisfaction, you have to be excited in God. You have to be joyful in God. Genesis, where we read from Genesis 1. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I believe that our prayers before we came into 2015 has created the heavens and the earth for us for this year. I believe the heavens and the earth has been created. Now verse 2 says, and the earth was without form. Just the same way some of us, we landed on 2015, and you are still the same height you used to be in 2014. You've gone to your wardrobe, and everything that is there is what you had in 2014. It looks like nothing physically has changed. The Bible says, when God, follow me somebody this morning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void. That means the earth was in its raw state. The earth was in its raw state. Every good soup, every good meal starts from a raw state. Hello? Mm. They do call the Baba. Every good meal, every good food you see up there started from a raw state. Now, this is what separates the boys from the men. And the Bible says, And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. I don't know where you are at the beginning of this year now. You may look around you and you may be asking yourself, I have prayed, but it looks like nothing has changed. Follow me this morning. If you live here today and you sit on your head, angels will flog you. <laughs> Folks sometimes are some of the most lazy people you can find. They hide behind prayers. <laughs> they hide behind prayers. I wish it was just prayers alone. I wish it's enough to just have faith. The Bible says faith without work is dead. Is dead. What is faith? Is believing for something. Is a hope for something that is not there. And the spirit of saying, you do well. You can't please God if you don't believe what is not there that is dead. But James went on to say, show me your faith. I will show you my faith through my work. Now listen to me, friends. The ancient of this created the heavens.
heavens and the earth. In the early, you be a trailblazer. You be a peace setter. In the name of Jesus. Not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. I am going to give you some keys to beginning hell this morning. I'm going to deliver certain steps you can take to ensure that you begin early in life. Glory. Because God is locating somebody here. You are going to be a peace setter in the name of Jesus. People will refer to you in this year in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that you will satisfy your early. Let it be an hunger in your spirit. Let it be a burning desire that you will not wait till July until you begin to reap the benefits, the fruits of the promises of God for you this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It is always challenging in the beginning. Because the beginning of everything have little or nothing to work with. Is that not true? If you want to build a house for instance, back in my country where I came from, if you want to build a house, you start with a, a piece of land that may be filled with all kinds of trees. Maybe big trees. And it looks so challenging that how can this be done? But you just need to start from somewhere. The word beginning means to proceed for the earliest part of something. To commence something. We are in 2015 already. Wake up. <laughs> we are not praying for 2015 to come again. We are living in it. The movie already started. The dance is already on. We are in 2015. And let me announce to you quickly, four days is already gone. Follow me to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. He knows who Salah Bahaya does pray. Ecclesiastes 10 is loaded. I want to narrow it down to two or three things today. Verse 5, for instance, said, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error that proceeds from the ruler. This mistake is from the ruler. It's a folly is set in great dignity and the rich they sit in low places i have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth friends you and i we are covenant people the blessings of abraham is upon you and i he said he has made us priests and kings to our God. Now the Bible said there is a what is left in this home? It's all it's all it's all it's all almost gone. I was troubled in the spirit. So I called a guy that I know he's smart. Somebody said I know that guy is smart. So I called him up and I said, This is what I want to do. And he said, Pastor, don't do it. He said, don't do it. I am going to take you somewhere. And he told me something that became a part of my philosophy of living. He said, Pastor, don't walk. Let me spell it for you, for those of you that don't understand my accent. W-A-L-K. Don't walk with your legs. He said, do it with your mind, with your head. He said, because if you walk with your legs, in two months' time, you'll be tired. Yes. But with your head, you can go very far and still be going. He said, in this land, Pastor, one of the things you must learn here, you must walk with your head. In other words, you got to be smart, Pastor. I said, talk to me. And the next day, he took me. And we went somewhere. I had to cut the long story short. 
we got that property. I caught somebody that was sharp. I sought advice from somebody that has sharpened his edge in the land. Friends, if you must achieve things quicker in life than your mate, if you must be ahead of them, you must take up time to shampoo yourself. When they say on your mind, say go. Some people, they quickly just go with their blunt knife to begin to cut, thinking that is how to win. No. Why the wise one look at the knife and allow them to be doing their own thing? They will go somewhere and begin to fight. And others will be saying, oh boy, this guy is wasting time. They're taking time to shampoo the knife. By the time they come back to begin to cut, the effort others have put in, in one slash, someone say in one slash, they will catch up with them, and in the next slash, they're ahead of them. Number one, you must load yourself with the word of God this year. Hey, Yahushua, hey. Because it is not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, say the Lord. God has promised us, and it will come to pass through his word. Number two, I said, prayers and fasting. The Bible said, this time goeth not away until you had the force of fasting to read. There are certain things that would not shift. For you to use just prayer alone to push it, you will pray for a longer time. Is somebody hearing me this morning? I pray this will be a blessing to you. For you to use just prayer to push it down, you have to pray for a much longer time. But if you apply the force of fasting and prayers, the Bible says this time goeth not away unless you add fasting to it. Number three, service to God. It says, sing first the kingdom. And all these things shall be added to you. Find any man that is dangerously committed to God. Locate them. I'm not talking of high service to God. I'm talking of people that are sold out in their heart to God. People that are giving everything to Him. That are placing number one in their life. They say, seek first the kingdom of God. And all, somebody say, all. All this other thing. That men seek for. You see, when people will be running after those things, those things, they will be running after them. Today they are running after car. They spend six months and they finally get the car. Okay, I need a house. Oh yeah. <laughs> they spend another six months to look at the house. After they get the house, they say, Ah, man, this work I'm doing is too much. I need a personal. They're doing the same thing, nothing is happening. The scripture said, The labor of the foolish will react every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. In this year 2015, you will find your city in the name of Jesus. There is a place for every one of us, there is a city for every one of us. There is somewhere where you come into that place. All of a sudden, things that don't used to work will just begin to work for you. Doors that don't used to open, all of a sudden, will just begin to open for you. To me, friends, if you find your city, everything will just begin to happen. Everything will just... There are some persons, when you come into their life, it's like they are your city. All the gifts that were locked up inside of you, the things that you 
didn't know you have the potentials inside all of a sudden they will just begin to come out they'll just begin to find the spirit of you have come to your city then your labor will not weary you in this year 2015 don't live in the village where is the city the city is a place of activity I live in the suburb the suburb I live in it took us almost my been there for almost seven years before we had our first hotel we have just one hotel oh boy when they brought a super Walmart there we celebrated finally super Walmart when they not dualize the road oh boy life has started then when my city now built a city hall, oh, Jesus, we are on top. That is the suburb. But come to the city. You see activities. You see cars everywhere. You see flyovers everywhere. You see numerous hotels, shops, everything is in the city. Now when you find your city, somebody said my city. You say my city. You are not born in your city because there is activities going on in the city when you find your city when you find that place that is your city things will begin to happen for you you touch this one is opening you make this phone call is answering I release you into your city in the name of Jesus in this year you will operate in your city you will operate in your city Isaac was in the city Isaac was going to leave in Genesis 26 because of hardship. God said, stay here, son. I have activities here for you. Sit here. I have things. You know, how many of you have heard of Rayon Bonke? One of the world's most known evangelists was a pastor in South Africa. Go read his biography. Was pastoring a church in South Africa. Pastored that church for some years. And you know, church grew to 200 and they were praising God. Woo! 200. Glory. Until one day, God said, I'm taking you to your city. You are leaving this church. You are going to start preaching my word from city to city. When he gathers in a place, over one million people sometimes will gather. Soon as he landed in the city, his labor no longer will lead him. Error must be corrected in my life. Ah, with him. It's an error. Any satisfaction. Find your city. Once you find your city, everything will begin to respond to you. Work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. You are entering your city this year in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are entering your city this year. Every error is corrected in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew when I got angry. A friend of mine came to visit me about seven years ago. And I was driving one 1991 Honda Accord. I can't forget. The brake lights, one of them is gone. So he said he needed to go somewhere. I said, take my car. Uh, go take care of yourself. When he entered the car, he called me from. He said, this is this, 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 this motor you are driving. <laughs> I said, brother, the spice not the days of little beginning. It will take you from where you are going back to where you came from. Drive that car. But something came up in my head. How long can I live like this? Error to leave a place of honor and come to a place of shame. If somebody says an error, says an error, shake your head, says an error. It's an error that should not be permitted. That error is corrected in your life. I say that error is corrected in your life. 
I say it's corrected in your life. You must begin well and you must start well. 